In the last lecture we were discussing about uh, the genesis of waste generation and types of waste and their forms and this is where I also discussed about the definitions which are used for defining the waste material, different definitions which are prevalent in contemporary society, what are the flaws in them and what is the connotation of different words which is associated with the word waste, waste material which is industrial byproducts. And we started talking about then the types of waste that is the hazardous, non-hazardous, industrial waste and so on and this is where I stopped in the last lecture where I talked about various industrial non-hazardous waste and there was some discussion going on that why some waste materials fall in this category and why, why they are not in the hazardous waste category. And this is where we were discussing about that some of the material fall in on the borderline, it is very difficult to differentiate them between uh, hazardous and non-hazardous waste material. Now, my question to all of you is that uh, what comes to your mind seeing this list, what could be done as a technologist or as an entrepreneur, what really clicks you, what comes to your mind, what could be done in this area, what type of thoughts come to your mind, that is the top agenda, you are right, why it is important. So, you can link sustainability with this. All right, uh, you are right. Uh, elaborate it a bit more. Elaborate it a bit more. So, in way, in what way it's going to help you? Like conventionally, uh, organic and liquid waste are produced in industries, but uh, organic, sorry, organic manure, manure is produced in industries for uh, various agricultural purposes. But if we can use these organic waste and uh, 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 use it as a like make manure out of it, so we can both reduce the uh, uh, reduce the resources used, new resources used for making the manure and use the waste. Correct. Any well. other idea which comes to somebody's mind? See, in contemporary environmental geomechanics or geotechnics, I am using a word nowadays, it is in fashion. I, I am coining a word. This is marrying two potential candidates. I hope you will agree with this logic. So, as per you know the tradition, particularly in Indian traditional marriages, what do they do? There are some houses or some people who do not believe in boy and girl seeing together each other, is it not? So, what do they do? The first thing is, what do they ask for? They ask for horoscopes, is it not? And then there is a logic that horoscope can characterize you in the best possible manner. So, see this is where also characterization word comes in the picture. So, depending upon your nakshatra or birth star or whatever, they try to they try to characterize you, is this okay? So, something of this sort is going on in uh, present day you know technology when we are trying to marry two potential candidates and what are these candidates? These candidates are the byproducts, and as he rightly said, the whole sustainability issue is pivoting on this. What is sustainability? How do you link sustainability with this concept? This is where the crux of the research and entrepreneurship is. So, both these go together. You are getting the point. Can you create some ideas based on this type of logic? So, people are talking about artificial soils these days, actually our research group is too much into it. We are trying to create artificial soils, man-made soils. Manufactured soil is one, but uh, manufactured sand, yes. So, for that matter, you know, from Cyan to Panvel highway for airport has been done based on manufactured sand. It is not the river sand which has been used, 100 percent manufactured sand which has been used for the first time in the country. Yes, that is a good example, but what is man made soil? He has given you clue. Now, what is sustainability? Sustainability is, you remember in the first lecture, second lecture we were talking about sustainability. How would you define sustainability? Optimum utilization of resources so that uh, there is plenty for the future as well and we do not uh, deplete all the resources in our present. Itself. Very good. 
So, trying to optimize the resources in such a manner that even the future generations are not deprived of utilizing them, clear there is a simple word or simple sentence in which you can de uh, define sustainability. See another logic behind this whole concept is, I do not know whether you have realized this or not on which I am working particularly. Most of these minerals and the resources come out of soil or the rocks, clear. So, what should I be doing so that the complete cycle of sustainability becomes more well defined. So, you, when you are mining resources, what you are doing? You are taking them out of the ground. So, what should I be doing further to complete the cycle? So, somehow if you can dump it back into the soil, the cycle gets completed, clear. Now, all these things are example of this philosophy that I am first of all distracting the environment, no doubt about it, I am, I am distorting it extracting the mineral, processing them, creating more and more industrial byproducts, but then somehow if I can put them back into the place from where they were retrieved, the cycle gets complete. Now, this is a big uh, philosophy which is in fashion right now. Most of the research is in this direction, you know x plus y and if I can create z and this z solves my problem of safeguarding the environment, my job is done, clear. How would you answer this question whether x plus y will give you z or not? So, you should know the attributes of x, you should know the attributes of y and you should be knowing the attributes of z which is going to be produced and this is where the characterization becomes very, very important. So, characterization I will start talking about maybe day after tomorrow onwards, maybe next Tuesday onwards. So, this is just to give you an idea about what is the menu card. You go to restaurants and you order the menu card, is it not? And then you order, okay, I want to eat this, you bring this for me. So, for technologists, this is the menu card. You have to select out of this one or two and then start your business, fine. A good example is, I think we were talking about phosphogypsum last time and I had asked you to do some net surfing to realize what phosphogypsum is. And I had given you an answer also. The more and more nutrition you want to give back to the soil, more and more phosphorus is required. And when you produce phosphorus in the form of phosphoric acid, what happens? You are contaminating the geoenvironment and then you want to nullify this effect. And this is where you use gypsum to nullify the things. So, gypsum gets converted into phosphogypsum and then you can purify the type of effluents which are coming out to safeguard the environment. These are the examples. So, think about this and I am sure this should give you an idea about you know where we can head forward and what we can do further to sustain our ecosphere. What given a chance what you will be starting? Give me some ideas. So, at this moment uh, what I feel is that it would not be the conventional, uh, it would not be a conventional organization like uh, most of the entrepreneurs do. Uh, it, uh, I think uh, this kind of uh, research can be helpful in in uh, founding companies which can tie up with organizations like maybe government or some few of the big uh, existing industries and then we can uh, help them by by you know giving them a way towards a sustainable correct de sustainable development. So, have you ever been to Alibag? Yes. What do you know about Alibag as far as technology is concerned, not the beaches? Did you, did somebody tell you that there is a very interesting example where the son-in-law and father-in-law are doing something together and they are no. creating a sustainable system? Well, I am hinting towards cement manufacturing and Jindal and Ispath is there, I am sure you must be aware of. So, Ispath produces a lot of what? Yes, and Ispath industry produces a lot of? No, steel is the product, byproduct we are talking about. Our, our target is byproducts. Very good, slag, clear. So, what can be done with the slag? Good. So, you bring this slag, crush it, and supply it to the next door industry and produce cement. So, that cement becomes your 
what is that called as not ordinary port land PPC clear PPC. So, that becomes your pozzolanic port land cement clear. So, this is a good example of synergy between two industries. So, nowadays whatever SEZs are being designed and created I am sure you must have realized that you know the next industry and next to it and next to it they all interlink in terms of utilization of their byproducts. So, somebody is using a steam which is coming out of the industry and this steam is being used for running boiler units somewhere else clear heat exchangers and so on. And similarly, you can use industrial byproducts to create a synergy between the byproduct itself. So, this type of thematic thinking is taking place. The issue is if you appoint foreign consultants, how much they will be charging per day? Any idea? Any guess how much you will be charging tomorrow if you become a consultant? What will be the value of your per hour consulting? Any idea, rough idea? You should fix it before you pass out as a BTEC student. You know this? Tomorrow somebody will ask you a question, you say, okay, I will answer you in 2 hours and my charges are this much. So, how much you will charge? Define a value for yourself. So, the standard rate is let us say 500 dollars per hour or say 1000 dollars per hour or 4000 dollars per hour, top consultants will charge something like that, clear. So, imagine if these type of ideas you have to give, they should not be given free of cost. You have to charge accordingly. You say, okay, sit down, I will give you a standard template, come out with the solution and implement it. So, then this becomes a your project report, DPR and all those things. Any idea you what you will be doing? He gave a good example about you. Yes, what comes to your mind? But then you have lot of competitors by the way. You have lot of competitors in the market. So, maybe 15 years back if you would have started this business, it would have flourished. But now no more, sorry. There are <laughs> you know mega companies who are doing this thing. So, you have to think of something which is extraordinary, yes. Actually, I was also thinking about using all these minerals in the cement industry. Any example which comes to your mind or what your hunch is? See, simple example I will tell you. Try to relate the problems of different continents with the continent in which you are living. And always remember what are your strengths. Fly ash somebody was talking about. I mean, there was a time when India used to export fly ash. You know this? And there are the guys in Bombay whom I have helped. And they have all become multi millionaires now. I mean, they do not know how much wealth they have. But then there was a time when they used to come begging, you know, <laughs> that just as two samples of the fly ash and we want to start something. Now they have become so big. So, like they started exporting fly ash to the countries where you do not have soil, Middle East. You are getting the point? So, this is the value of the industrial byproduct or the waste material from your home when you export it to some other place. So, this is a sort of an idea which motivates us to work on artificial minerals. Have you ever been to dentist place? How many of you? Good, you should not visit many times you know. But why I am asking you this question? Dentists are the one who use maximum minerals, high strength minerals, clear. Sometime back I gave you an example of how uh, this nano indentation can help you. Try to feel the pressure which comes out, comes between the two teeth. Press it and see, imagine if you could measure this, how much pressure you are imparting on each teeth when you close it and press it like this. How many mega Pascals? Any idea? So, this is the crushing strength of the mineral which you should be having to create a teeth or a denture. So, people are talking about nowadays high strength minerals, not the naturally occurring mineral which are in fashion. This is another interesting area where people can work. I can dope them with different type of nanofibers, clear, composites. I can make them high strength minerals. Until now, people used to talk about only high strength and high speed steel. You know this or not? 
people used to talk about high strength high speed steel, but now we are talking about high strength high speed minerals by doping something into them. So, plenty of examples are there where you can do wonders, it is not only South India, there are many uh, case studies which are available already in this context, but then your question is not complete. Are you reading this reclaimed plastic and trying to ask this question? Plastic can be utilized in different ways. Our research group is working on the plastic which is buried in municipal solid waste landfills, which is non degradable, clear. And we want to extract all this plastic to create as a reinforcing layer in the sub base course or base course of the roadways. Now, if you want to create a very high strength macadam, macadam means surface, I can always put plastic chips in asphalt, bitumen, I can reinforce it. Go to Singapore, most of the roads are crumb rubber macadams, they call it CRMs or CRBs, crumb rubber bitumen. So, what do they do? They reinforce bitumen with rubber itself. Why? Why do they do so? Sorry? You are very close, but not this is not the right answer. Think a bit. What is the biggest problem in temperate climate like India, particularly northern India? Heat, yes, not crack. Very good. So, what happens? good, excellent, then so what will happen ultimately? When you drive on a summer afternoon on the roads let us say in Indore or maybe northern part of the country, what is the biggest problem? Why you have to be so careful? Skidding, correct. What is skidding? It reduces, why? I have given you all the clues. Huh? viscosity, fluidity, what you are talking about. So, at very high temperature what happens? The bitumen or the asphalt which you are using loses contact with the aggregate, it flows clear. So, it loses contact with the, with the, with the surface. Now, what is going to happen? The skidding will be there. So, if I want to arrest this process, what I will have to do? I will have to add something into this so that it becomes a good binder clear. So, at the time of cooking asphalt and bitumen, if I add rubber chips, I am doping it, I am reinforcing it, it gives you a very good strength and environmental resilience, fine. So, this is how these concepts are like lot of people are using it. If I want to create different type of turfs for athletic athletes, clear, astroturfs. So, astroturfs are a good example where I can mix different type of rubbers and I can create turfs overnight for sports facilities, for velodromes where I would test my vehicles and so on, fine. So, these are all ideas you know which are the contemporary things people should practice. Apart from this anything which comes to your mind, yeah you would not say anything, you and you both of you, yes please. In China they are uh, uh, using some air purifier and collecting the carbon from the atmosphere to make diamonds, that kind of thing I have seen. I have never heard of, you, you know so more. Do you have some link or some information? Yes sir, I have seen in news. Just please share it with all of us, I have never read this. Seems to be interesting, yes. But how would you compact carbon? What is the density of diamond? Uh, Any guess? Density of diamond is more or density of steel is more? Man made system is more or the natural system is more? Check it out, you will get the answer to your question, yeah. But even then, you know, the power refractive index to be very high, what you have to do? The density has to be extremely high, yes. So basically, we are trying to reduce the carbon dioxide in the environment. So, maybe we can use the industrial waste by 
reaction level is some different that after the reaction they can become some like some product with actual value like instead of using them as directly additives why can't we make something a different product as well using maybe basically alkaline slags where which contain a lot of calcium so if we carbonate them then they become like densified uh, with the formation of calcium carbonate and yeah if you can do this it will be a miracle because most of the mining industry and agriculture industry and steel industries they are all having this problem He is right. Hmm. Okay, good idea. It is a good solution you can give to uh, the government. Anything else? This side? The dredge material is used in making embankments and. Uh, no. The no, no, no. First of all, dredge material is not used for making embankments. If you are very lucky and if you get good dredge material, like uh, our sheikhs could get in Middle East. Then only it is possible, otherwise, uh, in most of the coastal regions, very difficult because what you get is marine clay, and it is very difficult to make embankments out of the marine clay. So, there also I will maybe discuss about this. There are so many tests you have to do to understand the worthiness of the material. So, there is a complete le list of tests about 26, 27 tests you have to do to make sure whether this material is worthy of being utilized as Tata is spending a lot of money in fact, we have two projects from them where they are trying to very interesting story. Most of these power plants and their industries are on the coast of water bodies, is it not? Why? To get water as a coolant, clear? So, that means they draw millions of liters of water every day from these water bodies, how would you draw it? by creating a channel in the river or by creating a channel in the sea, clear? Now, if dredging is not done, what will happen? Slowly and slowly these channels will get choked. So, the question is the more and more you dredge, where you are going to keep the sediments? It is a beautiful problem, you know, for which they want a solution. And uh, somebody has to come forward and form a team. I mean like this is the time when people like you should come forward and take up these challenges and do something for the society. Anything apart from dredging? <coughs> now, creation of natural habitats, particularly like in a Pawai Lake, uh, you know BMC wanted to create a, uh, a crocodile park and uh, I mean I did complete investigations and all these analysis I did ultimately. So, they wanted to create, the whole idea was to do deepen the lake and to make a good water front for all of you and then whatever dredge material comes where you are going to keep it. This side is IIT landlocked, this is the whole you know uh, express highway followed by the hotels on the other side and the hostel 1314. So, what you are going to do with the dredge material, where you are going to take it? So, these type of engineering solutions have to be given in today's world for which unfortunately there is no Indian company to take these challenges. Anything which comes to your mind apart from all this? In agriculture sector, Mr. Modi is too much into agriculture, you know. You must have realized our Prime Minister has too much of focus on agriculture now. So, agriculture is a prime sector where R&D is required and things have to be delivered. So, like we are talking about soil health card as a geotechnical engineer, we are trying to work on this. So, we are trying to prepare a soil health card. Uh, similarly, somebody may try to develop precision farming and I think I have discussed in the class sometime back, okay. So, think about all these things and do something for the society. Yeah, I think people like us should come forward and. Yeah, that is fine, but what is that you want to do out of this menu card? I gave you an example last time, you know, debris are not being managed properly, particularly in mega cities. And uh, this is my fear, I tell you, I have discussed also in the class. If something happens untoward, how would you clean up the entire city? Imagine so many buildings are there, is there a contingency plan? Can you reach these buildings after let us say earthquake or disaster? 
forget about the rescue operation. So, the question is how would you clear up this muck which gets created because of some accidents. Now, this is an area where, where some experts are required, right? there is a need of the hour, very loud thinking, you will see another 5 years, 6 years, there will be some people working in these areas and they should be having their own paraphernalia, I mean, you cannot depend upon fire brigade, you cannot depend upon military and police and the civil administration of the city, because these are all technical issues, you are getting the point. So, the question is that uh, industries are generating lot of waste, where should I dispose them and this is the crux of environmental geotechnics, because I am sure by this, not, by this time you must have realized that you know byproducts are something which we cannot live without, if we are going for precious things we have to create byproducts. So, the question is what should be done, how to handle them, how to dispose them, where to stack them. Remember, I had talked about all these things long back that where should these be disposed. So, the first thing is maybe centuries back land disposal was being done, which is being done right now also. Most of the industries you will see the biggest problem is space crunch, you know. Maybe 40 to 50 percent of the land is being utilized only for stacking the industrial byproducts because they are not going to allow you to dump it outside. Is this a good situation or is it a poor situation, it is an alarming situation. So, so much of land is being wasted and you do not know what is what you are going to do with this material tomorrow. Now, to overcome this type of situation, some clever countries what they started doing, they started disposing things in the ocean and they were caught. There was a notice served to the countries, you know this? Yes, like culprits, you are a culprit, they are not following the rules of the international bodies. So, they are international watchdogs and they observe, they come sometimes and they ask you, how do you manage your waste, where do you dispose all this, clear? So, these type of issues are there. So, ocean disposal was a very clever way of disposing particularly the toxic waste. And check it out on the net how this green revolution stopped this practice of disposing waste into the ocean bodies, or ocean means river bodies or water bodies, whatever you may call it. Because you are knowingly, unknowingly destroying the flora fauna of aqueous world. So, incineration started, people started doing incineration, but incineration can be done up to a certain limit. Already I think I have told several times that the biggest problem with countries like India is that we are already energy deprived nations, we do not have so much electricity. So, how would we incinerate things? Because incineration has to be done at a very high temperature, why? Complete combustion, but there is something different than this. If I want to take out the entire calorific value of something, what I should do? I should do pyrolysis at 1200 degree centigrade, 1400 degree centigrade. That means, the ash formation will be very less. If you are incinerating something at low temperature, the ash formation is going to be a big problem, clear? So, maybe 75 percent of the waste gets incinerated, 25 percent of the ash gets generated, which is going to be highly toxic and I do not know where I should dump it. I cannot put it in the concrete which people say should be done, because tomorrow if I create a building out of this toxic ash, you know my market value of the buildings may go down. I do not know whether you have come across this or not, there was a time when people used to dispose toxic waste in the, sorry, apart from marine space, have you read somewhere? Oh, there are so many stories, are you aware of this? In your satellites, what you should can do? Put maybe few liters of highly toxic waste and put it in the another orbit and let it explode one day and fall on somebody's head. This used to happen. What is green revolution? Why green revolution started? I 
अरे यू रीड दिस बुक बाय ग्रीन रिवॉल्यूशन बाय दिस गाय प्रिट्स ऑफ कापरा प्रिट्स ऑफ कापरा ही गिव्स यू सो मेनी सॉल्यूशंस सो मेनी आइडियाज इन मूवीज आल्सो यू मस्ट बी सीइंग व्हाट डू दे डू दे विल टेक अ शिप दे विल फिल अप ऑल द जंक इन दिस हाईली टॉक्सिक वेस्ट मटेरियल एंड व्हाट दे विल डू दे विल टो इट अप टू अ सर्टेन डिस्टेंस ब्रिंग इट टू नो मैन्स लैंड and then let it go astray what is the meaning of this unfortunately fortunately it comes and hits bombay coast then it's your headache it's not their headache you see these are the intelligent ideas which people were executing for disposing the toxic waste and then suddenly somebody realizes that this ship contains all toxic material which is highly dangerous hazardous for the society so this is another interesting way so you know in different uh, space space they used to dispose ocean putting it in the ship and just towing it off their boundaries water boundaries and then leaving it there unattended some people do sewer disposal in cities like bombay particularly there are few pockets from where the entire toxic waste is being disposed in the sewers sewer lines and ultimately this goes into the lagoons and the water treatment plants septic tanks i think we were discussing about this decentralization of disposal system here or somewhere else i don't remember the context we were discussing in this class decentralization of septic tanks no it must be somewhere else oh yes that was in one interview i was asking a question to somebody <laughs> this person was trying to talk about decentralization of septic tanks is a good idea or bad idea what's your say on this no even if you do even if you do it in the best possible manner is this a good idea or bad idea so this is a very interesting point of debate you know if somebody ask you a question like this then this becomes a debate so people like will say that okay a centralized plant will always be economical and better controlled but then my counter logic would be look at the volumes which you are going to manage transporting is a very big problem yes you have been to warsaw area ever warsaw is famous for what apart from the big wigs who are living there is famous for lagoons and the lagoons means this is all the waste water sewage which is being disposed over there and stopped and impounded over there so there is a surface impoundment or the lagoon impoundment of you know waste they call it delay the process store and delay so if i store something some toxicity is lost or it can be decreased by dilution or by adding some chemicals to this so these are the strategies which people who are from waste water engineering they adopt so whatever sludge is coming i'll stop it in big big ponds i will treat it there and then i'll dispose it in the marine bodies i can use this material for construction also blast furnace slag most of the tailings which are coming out most of the glass residues which are coming out of the industry are a good example of this and the last one is definitely the resource recovery but it's a very expensive process if you are trying to recover something out of it. so let me give you some idea about what are the hazardous waste as per us epa you must have heard the name is us epa any idea what it is us epa united states very good and equivalent of this what is in india which we follow cpcb yes central pollution control board and what is spcb state pollution control board correct and moef see moef is the super thing which takes care of the entire thing so ministry of environment and forest and climate change now so they have now changed their name itself moef cc it has become since last 2 years so this was the amendment in the parliament and they made it now moefcc but most of the things have been derived from us epa only so some of you should become a legal advisor those of you who enjoy debate talking too much interpreting things you know they should be adopting this profession 
why? I don't know whether you read this newspapers or not. You must be realizing that maybe six, seven years back there was a big move at the, on the nationwide whether some industry should come in Ratnagiri area or not. Hmm? Dabol was almost 15 when I started my career 94, 95. Dabol, I used to go there. Apart from that, any example why this area was in limelight? So much agitation was going on every day, something used to happen. In you, you see, the technologist, as a technologist, please remember coal cannot be buried inside red soil. Laterite, never. Why? Compositions are different alumina, iron, magnesium, clear? So, coal has nothing to do with this. So, coal is mostly in the Gangetic belt. So, when you are talking about the coastal areas where you have marine clays mostly or weathered material, soils, so it cannot be thermal power plant by the way. Yes, but you are very close to the right answer. Yes, very good. Excellent. What is the name of the nuclear power plant? It was a big national agenda at that time, you know, six, seven years back. Jaitapur. Jaitapur. Clear? So, there were a lot of issues related to Jaitapur nuclear power station to be established. Why? Different angles, different people. Now, why I was telling you that some of you should become an expert in this subject? So, that you can interpret the laws of the land and you can defend governments or you can be against the government, does not matter because you are putting up your point at least technically, you know, and you can always convince the systems that look this is how the things should be. So, imagine if you would have got a another nuclear power plant, India would have got benefited from this or not? What is your energy requirement in 2025, 2030, 2035? Any idea? It is a fun that we are still trying to establish thermal power plants of megawatts, which are nothing, you know, insignificant. In a country like India, what is the thermal power, what is the power requirement? It is terawatts, 2035, terawatt. Now, how are you going to meet these numbers is a big question. So, you create hundreds of nuclear power plants not required, even 10 nuclear power plants can do wonders as compared to 200 thermal power plants and maybe 5000 hydroelectric plants and maybe 5 lakh or maybe more than 5 lakh solar units, clear and maybe billions of wind towers. This is the equation, you put it on a log scale you know curve falls beautifully straight line. So, this is how our energy requirements are and this is where as a civil engineer geotechnologist you can play a very important role. You take care of the minerals, minerals they are processing and ultimately then yes. But see we do not have that option, we do not have that luxury. Please remember one thing what advanced countries are doing, we cannot even think of doing that for another 50 years. Where Japan is M135, M110 where India is M65, M75. These are the numbers, but they tell you how many years behind you are. 65 to 125, 135, imagine 60 years, you know, 50 years we are lagging behind. So, what they are doing and what we should be doing, we are different context altogether. Here we have to cater to the masses. Please remember always. And there you have to cater to the elites. That is the difference. So, whole engineering practice will depend upon mass versus volumes. You got the answer? So, they do not want to have this, they do not want to live in the shadows of maybe nuclear explosions or nuclear disasters. But the interlinking of the power from different continents to different continents, how would you be doing? That itself is a big question. These are the four categories of the ways which have been uh, created by USP or defined by USPA, hazardous waste, uh, aqueous inorganic, aqueous organic, organic, 
and hazardous sludges, studies and solids. Countries like India, we fall under the category of type 4 because we produce mostly sludges and sludges are though domestic, but they are having lot of industrial waste associated with them, courtesy our sewage system. So, when you talk about the hazardous waste, it is understood that the source of the activity is industrial and this is going to pose a very significant threat to the environment. I think this part I had discussed some time back that what is the difference between hazardicity and toxicity. Toxicity is the concentration limits, hazardicity is the lower form of the toxicity which is safe or which may become unsafe because of the increased concentration. A good example is most of the medicines if you just take them in a concentrated form, they are very toxic, but then if you dilute them and if you consume them, they are good medicines. So, hazardicity, they fall under the category of hazardicity. But I am sure you will realize that it is very easy to say on paper like this that you take 1 gram of waste and dissolve it in 100 cc of water and dispose it of somewhere. Now, in today's world, water itself is a big commodity. Is this correct or not? So, getting water is also not easy. Now, if I take sea water and dilute the industrial waste, okay, cities like Bombay and the coastal areas can afford this luxury, but what about the places which are quite inside or the mainland where you cannot transport the water easily. So, these type of issues are becoming very, very pertinent how to deal with the toxicity itself and what type of technology should be devised so that I can mitigate the toxic effect. This is I do not know whether I have given you this idea or not, encapsulation used to be one of the ways to deal with the toxic waste, encapsulation. Did I talk about this? Encapsulation. So, you take the waste material and encapsulate it in, in a matrix like cement, concrete or glass so that nothing will come out of it. So, glass is the best example of a system which is 100 percent translucent as far as activities are concerned. So, the best possible shelters against atomic wars would be the salt domes which are amorphous glass and which shields most of the activity. So, suppose somebody asks you to create a underground space for protecting maybe top 1000 guys of your country, most intellectual guys, where you will place them in the event of any bio war, atomic war and all these type of things. So, these could be underground shelters and nowadays if you check it on net, you will find that underground storage of gases is being done, particularly the natural gases which you are talking about. Somebody was talking about carbon dioxide and all. So, you know I will capture it from the environment and I will force it into the underground systems where I have completely <coughs> intact rocks which are highly amorphous in nature and nothing will come out of them, no activity will come out of them, no gas will come out of them. So, these are the best possible reservoirs for storing energy. So, whenever you get a chance to work in these areas, you will start realizing the importance of underground storage and their infrastructure and the type of geomaterials which are used. Salt comes out to be the best possible example of the rock in which the energy can be stored salt, the common salt which you eat, we call them as salt domes. So, check it on net those of you who are interested, salt domes are the salt domes, S A L T salt domes D O M E S. So, salt domes are the structures in which the energy or the gases or the carbon dioxide is being stored for the future applications, fine. Now, let us talk about the sources of hazardous waste. The first and the foremost is nuclear. Where do you use nuclear components in contemporary world? Why it is a big hazard? Why it is hazard number one? Nuclear power means I have already taken out the ore. I have done beneficiation of the ore. I have taken it to the industry. I am using it as a fuel. Now, from this point onwards, the cycle starts. So, any stove or any young ATU or burn, what happens? You produce lot of ash. And what do you do? Normally, you dispose it out in others courtyard, <laughs> is it not? That is a normal practice. Now, unfortunately, nuclear power plant residues cannot be disposed of in other places except for maybe offshore. 
or just now I gave an example that put them in a satellite and launch it into different orbit. That was being done or third example was put them in a ship and let it go straight and let it hit somewhere. So, nuclear power, medicine, energy, weapons, clear, research of any type. Most of your physicists, atomic physicists, the type of research they are doing in all walks of life nowadays, you know, nuclear energy is being used. So, these are the four or five sources from where most of the nuclear toxic material comes. Now, the question is you talk to any physicist, he will say, it is none of my business. My job is to do the experiments in a reactor, atomic reactor, clear. So, the question is who will take care of the byproducts which are coming out of this reactors. So, only civil engineers can take care of it, no one else. Sometime back I think I had given an idea, you type under Google this post closure activities, post closure. That means, I have dumped the nuclear waste somewhere and then I have to isolate it from the entire environment. So, this is what is known as post closure. A lot of research is required in this because once the waste goes inside the ground, it is in continuous threat with the ground water, fine. So, you have to stop this type of interaction with the ground water and the nuclear waste, otherwise this will cause a big havoc. We are too much into nuclear waste disposal and containment, like there was a time when I was proposing a small nuclear power plant for IIT Bombay, you know this, to make IIT Bombay a self sufficient energy entity. But then IAEA came forward and they said it is an academic institution and sorry this is that, but I wanted to create a complete lab here because unless you have a reactor, you cannot analyze the waste which is coming out of it. And unless I analyze the waste which is coming out of this, how I am going to give a recommendation for how to deal with this waste. So, this is the whole cycle, you know. So, academicians and researchers mostly control the entire scenario most of the time. But I am sure if this would have happened, we would have been in a better position. We could have produced our own energy for the entire campus. And so, you just require a small pressure cooker. So, land requirement is not much. What will the volume of a nuclear reactor? Hardly 1 or 2 meter cube, not more than that. And I can produce enough energy for the entire Bombay city. And I can do my research also. The second thing is of course, that did not happen, but then I adopted a landfill which is at Kanjur Mark. So, we adopted the entire landfill and two of my PhD scholars are working on it. So, municipal solid waste landfills, you must be knowing that there is a big landfill at Kanjur Mark. Have you seen it? No? You are living next to landfill in fact, that is my extended lab. <laughs> so, I cannot create a landfill in my laboratory, so I have adopted a whole landfill. Kanjur Mark, where students go, they work, they do a lot of research and now the question is how to take care of the waste and how to accelerate its decomposition and so on. Is not MSW uh, sorted at the time of collection then? If it is, then how is it hazardous? Unfortunately, in developing countries like India, we call it as a segregation at source. Segregation at source is not possible because of poor education. All of us are educated illiterates. Given a chance, we will live here and there, nobody is saying dump it here, clear? So, that is a big problem. So, unfortunately, segregation cannot be done at source in such type of a population volumes and in developing countries, fine. Second thing is look at the climatic conditions of Bombay city, humidity and how many months of the year it rains here. Monsoon is almost 4 to 5 months, clear? Now, once you have such a prolonged monsoon, what is the implication? You know, the waste material is going to be always wet, incineration is ruled out here or it is going to be so expensive that first of all what you have to do, you have to dry up the waste itself to remove more extra moisture and then you have to incinerate it which becomes very, very expensive. So, answer to your question is segregation is not possible in third world countries. Read the papers which are written by myself and B. S. Patil and there we have written what should be done, what type of technology should be adopted in our prevailing circumstances. <coughs> and the last thing is, I do not know whether you have realized ever or not, 
landfills have become a source of politics. Do you realize this or not? Why? Very good, excellent. Yes, so how many phone calls you got overnight when there was a fire on the landfill? Some of us got every hour two or three phone calls, you know. <laughs> so, yes, it has become a very big problem and politicians are trying to start their careers. I have seen young politicians who are now becoming big, big politicians just by doing the politics of waste and forget about the cost which is involved in this. That is mind boggling. You cannot imagine how much money is involved in the whole game. How much money is involved? Times of India has revealed something 2-3 days back. 65,000 crores is the budget of MCGM. It makes money. 65,000 crores. Can you believe this? So, this is the amount of the money which is involved in the whole game <coughs> for which elections are being conducted and what not. So, it is a big country and we are very rich people by the way. Then most of the chemicals and uh, you know metal forming industries produce lot of toxic waste. There are few pockets like SEZs become very, very uh, prominent in producing uh, toxic waste, metal forming industries. Most of the chemicals which are being produced, most of the refineries like uh, very close to Bombay city when you go towards Surat, Ankaleshwar, Wapi, all these places you will find that these are the hub of the industries and chemical units. So, another question is you know why these uh, MNCs they come and install their companies or the establishments in third world countries. Obvious answer is obvious here people are dying you know without money, without food, without job and there they do not want to damage their environment. So, these are the answers which can uh, come to your mind. Another example is paint and dyeing manufacturing industries. So, the more and more paint, why it is so? Why paint is a notorious element? Lead and zinc, both zinc oxide coating is normally done on for galvanization if you remember. So, on any cast iron tube or pipe, what do we do? We put zinc oxide. So, zinc oxide is also a sort of a paint and varnish and the dye manufacturing units. Which part of the country was famous for dyeing process and Supreme Court gave an order, Jaipur. So, this print which you have, what do you call it, Thappa Sabha, I do not remember the name. So, they used to use chemicals for creating fabric and this dye manufacturing unit used to contaminate the entire water of the city. What do you call it? There is a name, no? Some print they call it, I have forgotten. And there used to be a big uh, colony where this type of activities were being done in the household, and this was ultimately closed down by the Supreme Court order. The groundwater was conti contaminated completely. Most of the mining industries go into the eastern part of the country, you know, Jharkhand, Bihar, northeast, where most of the mining process was going on the groundwater table is highly contaminated and I think we have discussed about AMD and other things, acid mine drainage which comes out of these industries when you leave these mines unattended. There is no solution available actually. Look at the irony of the situation as a nation which a society we curse government that see we should be getting this and these facilities, but the issue is the basic things have not been covered yet. If the mining operation is going on, what type of solution should be given to the mining industry so that the contamination of geo-environment does not take place. Are you realizing these small, small things? But they are very pertinent. So, the more you do coal mining, what happens? The more and more pyrite gets exposed to the oxygen and pyrite getting exposed to oxygen will create what? Sulfuric acid and this sulfuric acid migrates into the ground water and that is what you are drinking. So, the whole process is so dangerous, A lot of new technologies are there which should be adopted in country like India 
which are civil engineering oriented, geotechnology oriented, environmental solutions to these type of situations where people have no clues. So, the question is who will pass on these ideas to administrators? Alone it cannot be done no, by individuals. So, it has to be a group effort. The problem is even if you made legislations, those who are going to follow legislations, there is a gap between understanding and what they read and what they execute. So, this is a very trivial situation. Have you heard about this paper and pulp industry and what it has to do with the hazardous waste? Any idea? What is your guess? Why paper industry is included in this? Very nice. Bleaching of paper. Yes, he is very close. You are very close to the right answer. What is bleaching? Mostly paper is washed using acids. You know this. Why? What is what is paper chemically? Good. So, what is cellulose? Hydrocarbon. COH group, what do you call it as COH group, clear? So, whenever you have COH group, what it does? It gets broken very easily. So, if I make H2 COH and then gets changed by sodium or by potassium, what will happen? So, these are the source of contamination, you know when you make paper, cellulose remains first of all for a pretty long time in the environment. It does not get decomposed, remember all of you. That is why in some of the emails they write before taking print out, please think of the environment. It is very difficult to decompose cellulose and lignin. Are you realizing this? So, they get stacked. Is this correct? You are a chemical engineer. So, the biggest problem in landfilling techniques is how to decompose these two things, it is not easy. Ex cost, 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 correct. But this is why now government of India has started a new mission on landfills and they are now talking about different technologies which can be utilized for decomposition of the waste, what she was talking about as a segregation process. The next stage would be I will dump everything and let the entire thing take care of itself. Four or five years back when my student Dr. Patil was doing his PhD, we had created landfill in front of hostel 10, a small landfill we had created, we called it as a BLF, bioreactor landfill. I do not know whether you are aware of it or not. And from this we created a new technology, how to decompose the waste within a small unit and then we were talking about decentralized landfilling systems for the entire campus community. So, this was a PhD thesis of B S Patel, if you are interested you can. So, paper and pulp industries fall in the category of hazardous waste because of several reasons. First of all, you have to cut down trees. Number two, acid wash, where this liquor is going to go, sludge which is coming out of the paper industry, you know you have to do lot of engineering to it and several times you have to wash paper. So, that means the amount of sludge which is produced for creating paper is tremendous where to use this. Third thing as a geotechnical engineer associated with the pulp and paper industry is whatever sludge gets deposited somewhere, it produces silt size particles, clear. So, there is a school of thought which says that paper waste can be utilized as silt man made silt, provided you take care of the toxicity part associated with it, fine. We are seeing the implications of so many things, <laughs> nothing is so simple. Uh, it is organic in nature, so can we not uh, use some kind of microorganisms or something to increase the rate of decomposition for those, like uh, the decomposition is mainly carried out by some kind of bacteria which are present in the soil. Yeah, so so that rate. Yes, your question is very correct. Now, the biggest problem is survival of bacteria at extreme pH values is a big question. So, all these things are acid, acidic residues or highly basic residues where even bacteria cannot survive. So, the biggest problem is how to neutralize these type of waste by using microorganisms.
that's so, a big uh, big question can we not like uh, make a buffer solution kind of out of it first we like uh, make the ph to come down to the levels where the bacteria is my student ganaraj is working in this area and we are trying to neutralize red mud which is a bauxite residues and we are trying different types of mechanisms we are using passage of gases we are we are talking about acid neutralization we are talking about microbial neutralization and so on and we are trying to see whether it really works out or not but seems to be quite difficult sir uh, near um, in maharashtra there's a uh, salt lake formed due to the meteorites striking lonar lonar ha uh, lonar so uh, incidentally we have a paper on that by the way uh, we have so we have characterized the entire lonar crater this paper is going to come in 2018 january uh, so when i was working in self healing concrete region so uh, we found some microorganism in uh, that region which lived in high basic uh, condition high uh, like so you have been to lona crater ever uh, no not you should it is a beautiful example of uh, what do you call it as uh, extremities the lake which is there has very high ph water clear 12.5 13 even but is still flora and fauna is surviving yeah Fine. that's why we try to use a microorganism clear yeah. now come out of this lake part and as you climb up in the bowl portion the bowl portion is the crater if you collect the soil sample from there it is very rich in iron and that's the reason when you climb up going down is very easy but when you climb up you realize that there is a pull which pulls you back you can't come out so easily of the crater i mean i have personally experienced this so it's a contrast See, this is what natural systems are another 1 km away from the lonar there is another creation of nature what nature has done there is a fresh water supply is a fresh water spring so because of the impact of the meteorite at one place there is a crater formation and then what has happened we were discussing about the you know <coughs> this continental rift and how these portions come out and go down sometime back so maybe because of that there is a stream of water which has got shifted on the right hand side of the entire crot crater so all these things happen you have a fresh water supply you have a very high ph water and so on interesting case study read that paper remind me uh, we have done lot of investigations on this nasa has done lot of investigations we took soils from lonar and we we have proved that what is that making it so interesting place for researchers to spend time and most of these soils are zeolitic in nature so you'll find a lot of agriculture is being done inside the crater itself so these are wonderful places to visit by technologists all right yeah, any other question somebody was trying asking no so this is an issue paper and pulp industry the more and more paper you want for the country the more and more environmental issues are associated with it this i think everybody understands the type of batteries and the fuel cell which are being disposed of here and there are the biggest source of toxicity and the hazardicity of the waste leather industry used to be one but now it, there is a very strict restriction on this from the supreme court itself and the entire tanneries have been almost closed but is closing down of the industry the solution suppose if you have to fight a case tomorrow in a court of law what will be your stand suppose government gives an order that close down this industry you will be very happy or you will be sad and what you will be doing as a technologist you cannot sit idle you know you will immediately counter claim it this is where your logics come out you know whatever you have read you are going to present in front of a court and you say this is not a correct solution apart from the industry lot of people who are involved social social issues economical issues what not but yes leather industry is the one which is creating hazardous waste so what type of solutions can be given for all these things hot water is associated with most of the heavy heavy industries like power plants and all this is tannin which is highly toxic in nature so the question is what type of solutions can be given what can be done what should be our role something comes to your mind or no we should just observe things happening and keep our eyes shut
See, these are the questions civil engineers should ask to themselves. Are you getting point? What is the point I am trying to make? What should be the solution? I mean, like, should I stop all this? Start importing everything from other countries and pay heavily for it. So, this is where the question mark is. See, these are the questions that one has to keep in mind, and then only technology can be processed. I think I gave you an example of electroplating. Electroplating is a big industry. So, most of the liquor which comes out of the electroplating process is self is very, very toxic. List is too long. I have just shown maybe a few salient features of hazardous waste and uh, the question is how to come. Now, those of you who are really interested in doing something creative should adopt each one of them or maybe one or two of them and try to generate and create a copyright for your idea and implement it. So, one of the solutions which I can give you to work on is on which I am I wanted to work, but somehow I could not get time and money and energy to work on is what is known as PRB. This has become a fashion in most of the developing nations, particularly Australia. PRB is known as permeable reactive barriers, write it down and start a company on this permeable reactive reactive barriers barriers. So, sometime back you know we were discussing about foundation isolation remember. So, that they become shock proof earthquakes will hit, but they will not demolish the buildings. We are discussing you know sometime back how to safeguard your structures against earthquakes. Now, when you create a PRB this is sort of a containment isolation technique. You remember we had discussed about how to contain waste, how to create isolation from the environment ecosystem. So, if I install underground PRBs in the mines or the industries where the minerals are being processed or the industries where hydroleum uh, sorry hydrocarbons and petroleum products are being processed where electroplating is being done mining operations are going on and so on. I will cut off them from the entire environment clear and these materials by virtue of their reactivity that is why they call them as permeable means any water or hydraulics will permeate through it reactive means chemically reactive barriers are barriers clear. So, these are the units which will filter out the ground water and the contamination in it by virtue of being hyperactive. That means, what I have to do? I have to create materials which are going to be hyperactive. I have to create minerals which are going to be hyperactive. How would you create hyperactive minerals? I only use the word no, this guy is very hyper, very sensitive to the environment. So, even 1 gram of this material would show a surface area of a hockey field. 1 gram of the mineral will exhibit a surface area of 10 power 4 meter square per gram let us say 10 power 5 meter square per gram. Imagine what is 10 power 5 meter square of a 1 gram of the material. Are you getting a feel of this? So, if I can create a surface area of the mineral per gram of this much what will do? The moment it comes in contact with the contaminants at least this much area will be taken care of by 1 gram of the material. Now, these are known as uh, systems with very high cation exchange capacity. If you remember we were discussing some time back cation exchange capacity of the material and specific surface area SSA. So, same sand particle which were earlier in a very dormant stage very passive looking. Now, what I have done? By giving some industrial treatment, I have increased the surface area so much that most of the cations which are available in the environment will come and sit on the surface of it and that becomes my filter, that becomes my permeable reactive barrier. So, a lot of chemical synthesis is required, a lot of mineral synthesis is required, a lot of mechanical engineering concepts are required because ultimately what you are going to do? You are going to create these powders and you are going to pack them to create a unit which can be inserted into the ground fine. 
So, this is how the whole technology becomes holistic. You are ready to take it up? Jodhpur is the target. You know why you are from Jodhpur? Beautiful classic example of why I am citing about Jodhpur. Why? Do you do? No, something has read it on the net first of all, or maybe talk to people who are from Jodhpur. Critical situation, very critical situation. You know, the type of water they are drinking is creating all the havoc. So, one of the examples would be this. Now, see, imagine all cities in India now have this type of issues. So, individuals cannot solve this problem. It has to be a group of people. You should be having a lot of franchise, you know, of these type of ideas which can be implemented at the right place. And you make money. It is not that you are not going to make money, you will be making a lot of money. That seems to be a good solution to safeguard the environment in today's industrialized chaotic world, fine. And I have given a lot of ideas now, if somebody has to implement them. R and D part we can take care of, Vijay, you understand this, yeah, so start something. And textile industries I have already talked about. Textile creates most of the pollution in the geo environment because of the resins, dyes, chemicals, acids which you use in creation of textile. 